Hey guys, it's your man's Squiggle, and we're gonna be talking about Windwalker Monk today in Antorus the Burning Throne. I'm super excited to be talking about this class. I've been pretty keen to play this class for the last couple of weeks, and right now it is absolutely baller. Like, it is doing some insane single target DPS. So, without further ado, here's my guide and enjoy. So, Windwalker Monk, or Monk in general, has been one of my favourite classes for the whole expansion. I really like the whole combo-oriented playstyle of Brewmaster and Windwalker. So even though I've been maining Rogue for the whole expansion, I really do like the Windwalker, and now that it is pretty viable and is doing some insane DPS, I'm going to be playing even more of it, so stay tuned. So the best in slot legendaries with tier 21 are going to be the Helmet, and the chest. Now the reasons for this is the free proc from the tier 21 bonus actually gets given by the wind blows your helmet and at the same time the chest is just a fantastic legendary that allows you to weave in crackling jade lightning into your rotation and maximize your dps and decrease your uptime. Now for this video I'm going to be using the chest and the waist. Um, this is simply because I do not have the helmet nor the new four set. So I'm just going to be playing it low key and this legendary setup really doesn't affect my damage too much. You can still see me doing some pretty respectable damage even without the best in slot legendaries. So the thing that is the most exciting about the monk is how close you can get to your sim DPS. Now currently I'm simming about 1.75 mil DPS and as you can see in this Garothi world breaker kill. I'm easily getting that DPS while even getting out from time to time to do the mechanics and not take too much damage. Now you can see in the sim DPS that Windwalker is actually pretty high, but this is justified by the Warcraft logs in Mythic. Now with the Fury Warrior and with the Outlaw Rogue, it is pretty hard to hit your sim DPS, especially taking into account RNG and fight link. However, I'm finding with my Windwalker Monk, just playing it properly is allowing me to hit my sim DPS about 80% of the time, which is really exciting for me as sim DPS is only a theoretical number and actually doing those numbers is far more important. So as we can see by the Warcraft Logs page, Windwalker Monk is probably the third best performing at the moment. This is a little bit skewed because a lot of the progression guilds don't actually log their mythic kills. However, this just shows that Windwalker has some crazy potential and it can perform really well, especially with the new sets that these mythic players probably have. For legendaries, as previously stated, you want to be running the chest and the helmet if you do have the tier 21 four piece. However, other good legendary replacements involve the wrists, the boots and the waist. Now what these actually allow you to do as well is to run uh, tier 21 4 piece as well as tier 22 piece as a bit of a uh, as a bit of a compensation reward. You won't be doing as much as people with the pure best setup but you should be close. For trinkets we can see that Spectre of Betrayal and the Eye of Command are going to be our best for pure standstill single target. However, you can see that a lot of other trinkets are rather close and a lot less tedious to use. For example, Spectre of Betrayal is going to split damage amongst all enemies in front of you, whereas other trinkets may even increase your damage when you get to AoE situations, such as stat sticks and things that give overall great stats. So I recommend getting about 3 or 4 of these trinkets just to be safe. Now, one thing that I'm actually going to recommend to you guys is to use the Astral Alchemist Stone if you don't have any trinkets over about 915 eye level because this just gives some great stats, costs probably 20k gold depending on your server and it's just a great statted item, even good for tanky if you want to do that as well. For artifact traits, if you do have the new tier 21 4 piece and the helmet, you're going to want to go with the Strength of Zhuwen. After this, for pure single target, we're going to go with Rising Winds, Fists of Fury, and then Split Personality. 
So a disclaimer about these traits. Now, Strength of Zhuen and Rising Winds are going to be pure single target. They aren't going to give you anything for AoE situations. However, the other two, Fist of the Wind and Split Personality, even though they are slightly lower simming, they get more damage for AoE situations. Your Fist of the Wind are probably going to be your best for most situations. For example, on High Command, I would definitely go with something like Fists of the Wind or Split Personality over the other two traits. As for the Crucible traits, these ones are a little more specific, since for your given character, your stat weights can be different. Now, I recommend that you sim these ones specifically, um, because as you can see, with the gear given, Murderous Intent is going to be slightly better than Master of Shadows and Shocklight. However, for your individual character, these may be equal, or some of them may be higher than others. Now, after that, it's just going to be the Torment, Secure, Infusion, and Shadow Bind, all equal. No great shakes there. These ones are generally really good for most of the specs, and you should be fine having either of them. These are all really good. Um, then you're going to want Chaotic Darkness and Light Speed for 9 eye levels and Dark Sorrows for 5 eye levels. Now, the Dark Sorrows isn't actually that bad, uh, considering that it gives an AoE effect, which gets really good in AoE fights on Mythic Plus. As for your stat weights, I recommend that you go Versatility over Agility over your other three stats. Even though they are extremely close, you want to be stacking one individual stat until your sims say different. So, I recommend that you go to Simulation Craft or to Raid Bots to sim your own character to see the intricacies of your own character for yourself, as these may change depending on the trinkets and the stats that you have. So as far as talents go for tier 20, you want to be using Serenity, Chi Wave, Energizing Elixir and Hit Combo. Now, the only difference that's going to come in when you use the helmet in the new tier 20 One Piece is you're going to be taking this. Um, Ascension says that it sims a little bit better, same with Eye of the Tiger. However, I feel like Chi Wave and Energizing Elixir are very beneficial, especially if you get better at mastering the For our opener, we want to start off by getting our hit combo rolling. So the way we do this is on the pull timer, we use our Flying Serpent Kick, and then we get ready to use a Chi Wave when the pull's about to go. Then we're going to roll in and start our rotation. So we're going to start off with a Touch of Death into a Serenity into our Priority. Notice that I'm getting stacks on this as well, which I'm going to be monitoring throughout. For our Standard Priority, we just want to make sure that we're keeping our Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, and Strike of the Windlord on cooldown at all times. However, when our Serenity is going to be coming up, we might want to hold on to these for a few seconds just to make sure that we're not losing any benefit from our Serenity. We want to make sure that we're getting at least two Rising Sun Kicks, one Fist of Fury, and one Strike of the Windlord into every Serenity window, and using Touch of Death for every Serenity and holding it for probably 40 seconds of time. So that just about wraps up my video, and I hope you guys really have fun with this spec. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me in the comments down below, or ask me on my Twitch channel while I'm streaming. Thanks for watching guys, and have a good day.